All right, so the next thing on my to-do list for the day is I need to, I need to feed my worms and I need to separate out some castings from my big bin to put into my garden. Uh, the soil I started with in the garden was, it was all clay. So I added um, some peat moss and other stuff to it just to break up the clay, but it's not very good. So I want to, I want to get some worm castings in there so that microbiology can start growing in my soil over the winter. Um, so in order to do that, I need some castings. So sneak peek, this is my production equipment. That is my selfie stick and my tripod. So in the brief amount of time, while well, it was instant for you, I uh, recharged my phone a bit and and built that so uh yeah so let's get started on the feeding the worms it's not very exciting but so like i have some drums here some little 50 or excuse me five gallon uh, buckets i use those for for uh, breeding bins so i have about 200 worms in each one and Every three weeks I go through and I screen out and separate the bedding and the worms from the cocoons, the eggs, the little worm eggs. Um, and then the worm eggs I put into my bucket here with the heater. So I'm gonna end up moving this out to the, the underneath the big bin. I gotta do a little more excavating. Um, I always like to come by and check and see if there's any uh, little baby worms on top crawling around. Um, I am going to put a little food in there for any worms that do hatch. So, I'm using what worm people call, um, sorry, I'm still learning how to live life. Um, it's called, a lot of people call it worm chow, so it's a combination. Don't get excited, Hunter, it's not Parmesan cheese. It's, uh, so it's a combination of, I use like the alfalfa pellets for horses, um, bird seed, uh, cornmeal, um, anzamite, which is like rock dust. It's really good for like micronutrients and the worms need uh, grit to process things because they don't have teeth, Hunter. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna give them a little worm chow. I'm just putting a tiny bit in because like I said, there's, there's, they're going to be hatching and they're going to be very tiny so they won't be eating a whole lot i don't want to have a lot of food in there and then it go bad and that kind of stuff so i'm I, like i said i'm just putting just a, a little sprinkle of the parmesan no it's not it's worm chow Dirt. okay let's get you set up and we will take a look inside the breeder bins see what's going on in there you never know Sometimes there's some, some live action going on in there. Oh, Lord. I'm going to get a selfie stick one day. Because, you know, duct tape's expensive these days. I promise. Production quality can only go up from here, peoples. Sucks that I left my tripod up on the hill. get a little close-up action here. Uh, anything going on in here? So, like, this is the bedding material I use. It's um, mostly, like, uh, cardboard, Jeff Bezos cardboard. I uh, run it through a shredder, and then um, I add... Uh, some peat moss or some cocoa choir. I don't know how to say it. Um, it's basically coconut fibers. They're essential, so I don't buy them. I just use peat moss, but I make sure to clean it, I wash it, and soak it for a while, and rinse it off, and then I add it. Um, I also put a little bit of lime in there so the, the pH is correct because peat moss is acidic, so you have to bring the pH from like 3.5 up to about 6 to 7. 6.5 is ideal. 
they still got some feet in there, as you can see on the top, so I'm not going to feed this one. I don't believe this one has many worms in it. I think maybe like 50 or 60 or so. This one's got a lot of worms. You can tell it's got a lot of worms because it's got the castings all over the sides of it. They've been crawling around a lot. And the only feed in there is like the big chunks that they can't eat yet. I don't think they can't eat. So, um, oh, live action, live action. Let's get you in here. So I don't know if you can see, oh, there, don't run away. Look at this. That is two worms having sex. See? Ooh. Kinda gross. It looks like they're eating each other. No, nope, but they're they're actually uh they're actually doing uh making the love. So alright, we're gonna put a cover over you guys and let you keep on making babies. Um uh, I don't think I'm gonna feed that one either. Lay back on it. Let's see. Bin number three. Also, you can see like there's some castings along the side, so there's a good bit of activity in here. Um, nobody's having sex. They don't want to get caught on camera like them two exhibitionists. It does need some feet, so just a little sprinkle of the good stuff. And because it's a dry feed, um, I I give it a little shot of just a little shot. You don't you want it to be damp. But you don't want it to be soaking wet. Um, as far as when you're breeding, like the breeding bins, they you keep them at a higher moisture than you would a conventional bin, but you don't want it to be soggy. So I just give it a couple little squirts on the on the old food, help that break down so they can eat it, and those worms are done. I don't want the little fellas escaping, you know. All right, so I guess next we're going to go screen the big bins. That should be fun. It's not really that fun. <sighs> what are we forgetting? We need coffee. A little fruit of the gods. Nectar of the gods, I guess. Mm. Boy, it is an absolutely beautiful day today. Like, I think it's about 65 or so. Just just gorgeous. Really hot sun, you know, but nice and cool in the shades. Can't beat it. Mm. I must walk up that steps at least like 100 times a day. Okay. So we're out here at the Big Bends. Down there, so I'm guaranteed to spill it later. All right. So, the soil I got is really bad. So, I really want to get the microbacteria and the micronutrients that the worms provide into that soil. Um, one of the things. So like, when you screen out the worm castings, I use three different size screens. I use a quarter inch, an eighth inch, and a three sixteenth. No. Quarter inch and a three sixteenth, I think. Maybe eighth inch, I don't remember. Two, I use two different sizes, that's right. So, the quarter inch screen, um, We'll catch all like the bedding material, the Bezos cardboard and like big chunks of food that they haven't ate yet. Um, the smaller screen, the whatever it is, 316th or eight. This will catch the bigger pieces of stuff that they haven't like consumed yet, like small, but not too small. And the eggs, the cocoons. Um, that's important because I want to save those. Um, so like when I actually start selling worm castings, um, I'm not selling off my future 
production, you know, my, my, my future livestock. So, um, you know, I want my castings to be pure castings because nobody wants to put castings in a flower pot in their house and mixing night crawlers or worms or red worms or running around. You know, we, we don't need that, sh that stuff in our lives. So today, because some of these are going to be going into my, my uh, raised beds, I do want cocoons, the worm eggs, going in with them. So I don't want a whole lot because I'm trying to build up my, my numbers so that way I can start producing castings at a decent scale and sell it. Um, so what I'll probably do is like a half a bucket with the cocoons, half a five gallon bucket, and then like the rest of the bucket just cat or just the uh, castings, you know. Um, I really want to get these the life going in these in these beds because like I said when I started it was just dead clay you know nothing would grow in it like it was terrible um I, did, I was able to get some some plants this this spring but on the the downside was I had to use like fertilizer um which I don't like doing because it's not it's just not good. It's not sustainable. It's not good for the environment. Um, I prefer to let nature do nature. And another thing I'm doing, which I don't do, but it's only because it's a new setup, is I'm going to till the, the, the garden beds. Because um, I'm going to add that topsoil that I have appropriated and um, the worm castings and, the, and that. Um, so I want to pull some of the, the, the extra crappy dirt. It's not terrible now because I didn't put some in this. I'm going to pull some of that out, set it aside for future beds, add that better soil and the, the castings and that, and get that that microbiology going. Um, one thing I did do when I first started these beds was um, I I went out and forged a lot of different uh, the funguses from like the the roof layer in the forest and. I basically inocul inoculated the, the soil with those funguses and I didn't know if it took or not and yesterday when I was doing um, the, 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 the trash dump bin over there um, I had to tear apart the other raised bed that I had had potatoes in and I had garlic in because I wanted to make it like four foot wide so I could reach it from either side and use some of that dirt for the other bin and it turned out it did inoculate the soil I actually had funguses fungi growth coming off the old roots of where my potatoes and where my beans and stuff were planted and the bean roots had the little nodules and that on it so it actually took so I do have the I starts with the name I can't think of the name right now fungus um, living in that soil now so that that's that was it was awesome and sad all the same because, like I said, I really don't want to kill the soil, but I want to work all these, this microbiology in there and get it spread out real good, you know? So, mm, is what it is, you know? I, like, I don't fault people for using fertilizers and that because, I mean, I did it this year because I wanted food. Um, but I, I don't like doing it. Um, so... I, I really urge people to to get out and educate themselves on like I'm gonna use the word organic but I freaking hate that word because it's just bullshit doing it the natural way like the way God intended because like God provides for us we, we just gotten so commercialized we don't see it anymore you know we don't bother to just spend a little bit of time and instead of putting that in the trash can composting it or you know we're just such a throwaway society and I, I think I think we learned a lot from especially our aunts or you know great great grandparents great grandparents and, and that that went through the Great Depression them fools that never threw nothing away after that you know and I, I think there's definitely something to learn and you know if we ever come upon bad times which kind of looking that way these days it'd be wise to uh Get smart on that kind of stuff now. So, all right, let's get to work. 
I am talking way more than working. All right, so this is the bin. Um, this is the, it's a combination of castings and bedding. Um, it's not very full. It kind of all got mixed up a bit because I had a trans, I just moved this the other day. I just built this the other day. Um, so the original design, it has slats on the bottom and I was gonna like, I had it all across the top and then as the worms did their magic, you put more food on top and eat the food and keep working their way up. Then you scrape it and the castings fall out. Well, I don't know. It seemed like it was gonna be a pain in the butt. So I'm doing what they call wedge method. So I put, I start here, you know, with bedding and that, and then I add food and you kind of do it as a slope, you know, like a slope, um, all the way to the end. And then you harvest as they move forward and just reverse it, you know, um, that's the method I'm, I'm going with, with this one. So, um, yeah, I guess, uh, we're going to get to, uh, sifting which I have a love-hate thing with it. It's kind of gratifying, but then it gets old pretty freaking quick, you know, because you're just kind of sitting there shaking crap. I am making, I have a, a plan for a project to make a, a electric shaker table to do it on. Um, we will be doing that soon. So I'm going to pause you guys, which will be like an instant because I don't know how to do things and edit probably.